to the metal. Today I'm driving the 2024 Acura TLX A Spec. And we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about this facelift. Should you upgrade? Should you buy this or buy a used 2023 model? Let's roll. Okay, before we start talking about the 2024 Acura TLX A spec, special thanks goes to our great friends at Performance Acura North Mississauga. They're an Acura dealership located in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. They're kind enough to allow me to borrow this thing for the day, take it for a drive, and show you everything you need to know about the facelift uh, TLX. And if you want to know more about them, the link will be in the description below. Maybe you want to take these for a test drive or upgrade your old TLX to the new one. Of course, other Acura models are available at the same time. But for now, let's talk about what's new for 2024 on the outside. Front end first. First thing you notice, the grille. The design is different. There's more aggressive. They've changed from the outgoing 2023 model. And then another thing I noticed because they did have the TLX A spec at the dealership, the badge. I believe this is bigger in comparison to that 2023 model. It's different design, more aggressive. The A spec is sort of like the M340i version, but of course, D tunes, making less horsepower. But this is your sporty ride, your sporty design overall. That's the idea behind the A spec. The sleek new design is framed by the four dual I LED headlights with the chicane LED daytime running lights. There's also a new front millimeter wave radar packaged behind the Acura logo. Another thing you notice is this beautiful urban gray pearl paint, which I think looks absolutely amazing. There's also a new paint choice for the TLX Type S, but for the Ace Pack, this is a new added paint for the 2024 model. The next thing is, of course, the beautiful wheels. We have 19 inch, which are new for the 2024 model. These are equipped with Michelin tires, 255, 40, all around, all season in this case. Absolutely love the paint choice because it really gives an amazing contrast. We have the blacked out mirrors, the same thing with the finish around the glass for the doors, blacked out at the same time, the Ace Pack badge located onto the left side, something that was available to the 2023 model. And so with this package, we get the standard one piston brake for the front. So it's not the same as the one for the TLX uh, Type S, which offers big brake kit. Moving on to the back side, some changes here too. First of all, we have the lip at the top blacked out, really perfect contrast with the overall design of this vehicle. I wish it was in carbon fiber, but I'm guessing that's going to be for the Type Pass, which is, of course, the fully sporty vehicle for the TLX model. Next thing, taillights remain very much the same. They're already beautiful, so there's no need to change that. If it's not broken, why fix it? You get the TLX badge on the right side, a spec at the bottom, and the super handling all-wheel drive from uh, Acura. Now, moving on to the bottom side. First thing you notice, back to the roots. Acura is offering single exhaust tip on each side, dual exhaust system in this case for the TLX A spec, which I think is huge improvement. Now you're probably wondering, Sam, it's just an exhaust. Why are you so excited? See, it's important to understand that the little things make the difference. And I think this is one of those. And what's even more important, unlike some German companies, <clears throat> not mentioning any names, these are real, so they're not fake which gives you the opportunity that you can probably tune the engine to make it a little bit spicier. But you have to understand that this, in my opinion, changes the entire design of the rear end. In fact, if you look at the 2023 model, the flat one that was previously offered, not a big fan. Now that I see these installed in here, I think they make a huge difference. But is it big enough for you to make the actual change? 
Well, that's up to you. At the bottom, we have an aggressive diffuser blacked out, matching the top lip, which I think really gives it that aggressive look at the back. Now, let's jump onto the interior. Let's start first with the second row. So clean in here. I don't want to get in with my dirty shoes, but I have to because I have to show you what's new for 2024. You're still getting that beautiful red interior, which I'm a big fan. With the red stitching on the door panel, the red leather mixed with the black finish as well, and then with the beautiful ELS audio system in the back. Next thing, you have the suede in the center for the seats, the perforated, the perforated leather, which gives this the perfect interior, in my opinion, for a sedan. Now, what's new for 2024? We have two USB-C ports in the center that the passengers can use. You need to charge your phone, your tablets. If you have kids, you get that option. Let's just say that the passengers in the back forgot to put their seatbelt on. New for 2024, the seatbelt reminder. That means the driver in the front will know that the passengers in the back do not have the seatbelts on, which is also standard. Into the first row. Let's start it up. It reminded me right away of the Acura MDX Type S in some ways. The interior overall remains very much the same. You get the center unit here with tons of buttons, which I'm a big fan. Heated seats, ventilated seats in this case. The design for the Ace Pack remains very much the same. You get the beautiful finish steering wheel with perforated leather, beautiful stitching red all around, sporty design, pedal shifters, still buttons on the steering wheel. Big fan of the overall usability of this. We don't get a heads up display with this package, which I think is a bit disappointing. In the center console, you're still getting the track pads to control the infotainment display, which is now larger than before. It is almost 25% bigger. Now it's a 12.3 inch screen, which is updated for this year. But the layout is very much the same, but you can tell that it's a larger screen just when you jump in right away. Now let's get onto the details. Let's talk about what do they offer. And let's start first with the driver's cockpit. The steering wheel is nice and grippy. Absolutely love the design of this. Very sporty at the same time with the Acura badge right in the center. Beautiful finish, paddle shifters. Now let's talk about the actual cluster because that one is new for this year for 2024. Let's do a startup to give you an idea how this thing starts up. Of course, you have seen this in the Acura MDX, which is very similar, but this one came with the analog. So the MDX had the digital. This is also a 12.3 inch infotainment display. Let's do the different driving modes. In this case, we have your sports, you got your normal, and then there is comfort. Doesn't change the layout fully. Let's keep it in normal mode in this case. And you can also change a lot of information into the menu. You have your phone, your Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, also Alexa in this case, USB audio, and so on. A lot of information that you can use. There's also the driver assistant package with this A-Spec model that you can use, keeps you within the lanes, gap assist, and so on. Very useful, but I kind of like this design because it really shows you cut a lot of information. And also it's nice to be up to date with everybody else that offers a digital screen. Let's talk about the infotainment display. This is also new for this year, but the layout is very much the same. So you have seen this before, but it's just a larger screen and it feels a bit sharper at the same time, remembering the standard TLX type S. I know I complain a lot about this, but I think with time, you get used to it. There is also different ambient lighting, which I have to get to because I am not quite the biggest fan of this system, to be honest. I like touchscreen, but the trackpad, I just find it. Okay, here we go. Ambient lighting. There's different themes that you can change from. Your dynamic modes, the comfort and normal. And if we go here, here you go. Autodromo, Suzuka. Automobilismo, Gran Premio, Alta Velocità, Pacific Coast, Baja Highway. That's interesting. Chapman's Peak, Route 66. There's so many interior lighting that you can go and change. And look at this. And they all have different names. Oh, there's an Amalfi Coast. That was my honeymoon. Oh, look at that. And it also shows you a picture from Amalfi Coast. And I've also been there. 
There we go. There's a Wall Street. What is that, money? Oh, look at that building. I thought money was just going to come down. And then Icefield Parkway. A lot of options here with this package. Blue Ridge, Canyonlands, Notre Dame. I messed that one up. But there you go. You got tons of options here. Of course, you get a split screen. So you get options on the right side. Let's go back to the menu. 360 camera in this package, Ace Pack, not available. You only get parking sensors with this model. Then you get different views. But it's nice and sharp. You can see quite a lot. And that's the back side. In case if you want to use this for towing. I'm not sure that's going to be an option. But sure. Here you go. Audio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can connect wirelessly. And essentially gives you the smart shortcuts from Acura, which is known for this. And then go back into the menu. You get used to the system. I know I've complained about this before, but I think with time you get used to it. Someone commented on my video the other day said that it took him two days to learn the system. I think, yeah, that is possible for sure. You just need to know how to work it like a couple of days and that's it. I don't think it's going to take that long, but I, I'm just not used to it. And the thing is that the trackpad uses two trackpads in this case. You got one for the split screen, the small version that you can control, and then there is the main one that uses for the main screen, which again, here you go. This is also equipped with audio system by ELS, premium audio system. We know Acura works with them very closely to develop audio system for their vehicles. And you can go into the settings and you can go into system. Sound. Here we go. In the audio system, you can adjust the bass, mid-range. Uh, you can adjust the roof, center speakers volume in this case. You got your zones, driver only. You have front, rear, uh, or full vehicle in this case that you can use. There's also a speed volume compensation, so it depends how fast you're going. It's going to change the sound. Uh, simulated surround sounds, compressed audio system. Um, it's a great audio system by ELS, I have to say, and the fact that they're offering with the Ace Pack, it's also great to know. It's nice to have this large screen because it really gives you a different feel and a different experience when you're driving the vehicle, in my opinion. And if you have your Apple, Car if you have your Apple CarPlay, this part over here is where it will be displayed. And then it has built-in navigation system in this case. <laughs> Now let's talk about the engine. What do you get with the 2024 model? Well, it is essentially the same one for the TLX A-Spec, which is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. And this one makes about 272 brake horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. It is equipped with a 10 speed automatic transmission. And of course, in Canada, it only comes with the Acura Super Handling All-Wheel Drive, which we know that is probably one of the best out there in terms of all-wheel drive systems. Now in the US, there's also a front-wheel drive version, something that you don't get in Canada because we don't really need a front-wheel drive apparently, based on what Acura believes. I think that's the case. Now, what else is new in terms of the driving experience? Well, Acura says that they have done some major changes to make this a lot better in comparison to the 2023 model in terms of the driving experience. It receives updates to the road noise, which has reduced it dramatically in comparison to the 2023 model. And the way they have achieved that is by including a thicker carpet, new front fenders liners. It has wheel insulators. It reduces that road noise, especially if you're driving around cars most of the time, like in a city drive, you notice the loud cars around you. Well, that's gone down. Do I notice that? Yes, but like 20% better than the 2023 model, especially today that it's windy outside. I don't hear the wind noise as much. Now, it's been a while since I drove the 2023 model, but I can feel a bit of that difference, especially today. In addition to all those changes that I mentioned previously, it also offers active sound control system to make sure it cancels the exterior sounds 
from essentially polluting the interior experience. So that way you hear less of that. Now that's a technology that you hear very much in luxurious vehicles to make sure that you get the best experience on the inside. So you don't hear much of the road noise. Now, in terms of safety features, what do you get with the 2024 model? Well, Acura has expanded the functions of the Acura watch, which now has a new front single lens sensor camera with a wider 90 degree field view. What that does is that it expands the field view for the sensor. So that way now can detect more objects on the road or moving objects to give you the best safe experience. Now, the question remains, should you upgrade to a newer version or should you stick with the 23 model? The updates are, I think, essentially for a facelift. But having said that, I don't see a reason for you to update. I don't see a reason for anyone to upgrade to the 2024 model. But if this is your first time buying a TLX or you come from a 2017 model, then why not go for the newest one? Gives you better road noise isolation on the inside. It's got a bigger screen, of course, for the infotainment, a better screen for the cluster. You get the best experience. Quite an amazing sedan, in my opinion. It offers the comfort. It offers the space overall. The super, hand, the super handling all-wheel drive system is amazing in this vehicle. If you live in Canada, it's very comfortable for long drives, very spacious on the inside. What I think they missed is one, heads-up display with the A-Spec, and two, a touchscreen option for the infotainment display. Now, in terms of that, I think it's just my experience. I do prefer it in my Mercedes, for example, the trackpad. It's a lot easier to use, but that's because I don't daily this thing, so I haven't gotten used to it fully. But I know a lot of people that own them, they, th they say that it's not really that bad. And I think everything with time becomes very easy to use. It's not that hard. I think they have given this car the best facelift that it needs. Uh, if it's not broken, why fix it? There's no point of anything else to add to this. In terms of the performance levels, I think 272 out of that four cylinder, it's pretty good. You put your foot down and this thing is just, it's not that bad for a four cylinder. Mind you, this is a car that weighs over 4,000 pounds tech feature this thing is loaded to the teeth now i do believe for the second row heated seats in the back would have put this car ahead of the competitors but at the same time it will cost more so that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about all these little uh added tech features if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and check out my other videos on my channel